G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. Today in the workshop we have a Land Rover Discovery Sport with a 2 litre diesel engine in it. Now it's got a fault code with a specific injector. What's wrong with it? Let's check it out together. Max, the mechanic is the man to fix it all. Yes, he can. With a joke and a cheer, your car troubles disappear. Just a bit of a backstory on this vehicle. The customer has only purchased it recently and it's got a few things that need addressing. He previously bought it in to me. I hooked it up to the scan tool and it came across a couple of injector codes. He went ahead and replaced one of the injectors with one from eBay or a second hand one and had some issues with strip thread on the bolt holding it down the injector. I also refused to fit a eBay or second hand injector because I knew that there would be issues and yes there was. So this time he's bought a brand new injector, a genuine Bosch injector and I'm going to install it for him today. What's the fault code involved though? There's several fault codes listed here but the one that we're going to focus on today is this permanent one here. Cylinder 4 contribution balance performance and incorrect operation. Now that's a permanent code. It's stuck in there good and proper. We've got an EGR fault as well. That's a history one. We'll see if we can get rid of that uh, later on. He also had a tyre that was so out of round I didn't want to road test it. That's how bad it was. He's got that sorted now which is great. But yes, as I said, we're going to focus on this P0272-92. Uh, now this refers not necessarily to the injector itself but as you can see um, it's a balance test. Now this generally indicates that the seal is leaking, the injector seal, but I've told him due to the, uh, the amount of kilometres on the vehicle that it's a good idea to replace the injector. Now he's opted obviously just for one. I've given him the choice of doing them all but he's just doing one for now. So we'll see how things go. Hey. Now I've just gone into hot functions just to confirm that I can do this job okay. It says injector replacement, that's in our hot functions over here. And it says upon replacement of the individual injectors, the injector control module requires the new configuration values for the injector to perform correctly. Read the injector correction factor from the injector body. Programming will be required by in injector identifications. So I'm going to make sure that I pull off the old injector, write those codes down, as well as the new one. If we go into here, display injector correction factors, it should bring up the list of the, um, turn the ignition on, yes it is, and we've got all our codes listed there of the current injectors. So I'll take a snapshot of that, and then that way I've got a reference for when I change it to the new one. According to our scan tool here, it is number four cylinder that's the issue. So there's our driver's side there, and that's number one. That's number four that way. Have a look at number one. You can see what the uh, other mechanic has done to try and remedy that uh, issue of a strip thread. He's actually put in a, a bigger bolt, etc. cetera. So um, look, it's not a torque to yield bolt, which I've spoken to the customer about, that guy there. Um, and so I hope that that's okay. Uh, the one that we're gonna do, there we go. Get in focus there, fella. There we go, number three, number four. That's this guy over here. And this time he's a little more prepared. He's got the, the correct uh, injector seal there. We've got the correct bolt. And looks like he's got them directly from Land Rover. And here's an injector over here, which I believe it's a Bosch one. I'm not exactly sure, but uh, it's brand new compared to a second-hand one that uh, either he had fitted or he just replaced the, the actual uh, seal. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, our job is to do this guy here. That's the important thing, hey? Hopefully it slides out all right. Uh, not necessarily that easy, but we'll see how we go. So because there's limited space, I'll just give you a run through as opposed to having you uh, stand by me and watch over my shoulder. Uh, so I can give you a rundown of what needs to be done. So firstly, our in, uh, electrical connector needs to be removed. Our leak back uh, hoses need to be removed. And then we've got our high pressure pipe down there somewhere. That guy there needs to be removed. And of course, we've got our bolt that's tucked away down in there, that needs to be removed as well. And then hopefully we can get the injector uh, pulled up. Now, uh, there was black death there before. Uh, it looks like he's cleaned it up to a certain extent. So all that black muck um, holds the injector in place. And, and basically that's carbon that's built up by the uh, piston or blow by. So as compression takes place, rather than it pushing down on the piston, if we've got a leak up the top here through the injector seal, then 
that comes up through the top and that creates what's called black death. So we end up with this black carbony muck on the top of it. Now this one's not too bad. I think he's cleaned it up already because if I remember rightly, there was quite a bit of the black muck cruising around there. So uh, hopefully it's not too bad to get that injector out. So just a bit of a heads up for a couple of things that I can help you with. Uh, I've pulled off this electrical connector here as you can see. There's a locking tab, this red guy here. Now what happens is you pull that red clip back there and then you can push down on this black connector and that just pops straight off like that guy. And when you put it back into place you just pop your locking connector back in so that it doesn't come off. It's locked in good and proper then, okay? Uh, the other thing that I did was this guy here. Um, this is the uh, leak back um, tubes and instead of pulling off the hoses yourself or pulling off the hoses, um, this little connector pops up like that and then that in theory should just come off with a little o-ring uh, attached to it like that. So that sits in top of the injector like that, okay? So this fella has got to get pulled up. You can see this one over here, number three, is pushed all the way down and you just get in behind these little clips under here and gently lift it up and it'll pop up then you don't have to physically remove all the hoses, etc. So the next step that I've done is undo this here pipe, the high pressure pipe, 17 mil um, size. And also I've put some penetrating oil. I've just used some, some of this Pro One stuff. Um, it's quite reliable, it's quite good. And hopefully that'll help to uh, remove the injector once I get all those bolts off and pipes off, etc. Hopefully it won't be stuck in there too badly that I can get it out. As I mentioned, the last mechanics just chucked in a uh, well, Allen key style type head over there. The bolt to hold the injector in, that's probably all that he had at the time. But in actual fact, these are a torque to yield bolt. They have what's called elastic and plastic sections that they can stretch or they get locked into place. And of course, buying a new one is important because uh, not just the threads may be damaged, but also the elasticity of the bolt itself. So in other words, it twists like this. Just lost my light. Uh, but that helps the, uh, the stretchiness or the torque will help with vibrations etc to hold the uh, injector in place and then you won't have any issues. So over here you can see that I've pulled it out. Now I, I tightened it up to start with, loosened it, tightened it, loosened it etc and I put some lubricant on the thread as well and it came out quite nicely but uh, you can see that uh, have a look at the stretch in the bolt there. I might see if I can clean it up and show you a little bit better. Even though these bolts might look okay, you always, always replace them because you just don't know if it's gone past its elasticity. In other words, it just becomes a solid bolt as opposed to being able to um, stretch or torque a little bit backwards and forwards to allow for vibration, etc., to hold this sucker in place, to hold that injector in place. So always, always, always replace your bolts. Okay, the dreaded time to pull out the injector. Now I don't have an injector puller, just like you probably don't. Now I did clean up this area. I got some uh, cleaner in there, some compressed air in there as well and blew it out as best as I can. I'm gonna do it again, just before I lift out the injector, but you can see that I've got the injector up high. How did I do it? Well, I've got one screwdriver under here. There's just a lip under the injector that you can get to and I've lent on that bracket there like that. And in the meantime, I've used another screwdriver and I've just levered this backwards and forwards like this. That in turn has got some pressure on it and it's lit, lifted up nicely and then I could wiggle it with my hands and pull it up. It's popped up past its seal, so I'll give it a quick clean before I physically pull it out. Just by using a methodical approach, I've been able to get the injector up. Slow and steady wins the race, guys. Don't go bullet at a gate. You just wanna take things nice and easy. Now this injector should, in fact, pull out quite easily. Okay, that's good news. Um, down in there, it's probably fairly damn atrocious, I would imagine. Let's get a bit of a light down there. Have a look. Ugh. Don't know if you can see, but that's not looking great, is it? Okay, so I'm gonna have to clean that mess out. Otherwise, we're wasting our time putting in another injector and seal. This in turn, you can see why it's leaking. Have a look at the, the copper washer there, the seal. It's all full of muck. That's no good, guys. That's no good to anyone. That's why it was leaking, because it blows past this seal. So we're doing the injector as well, as mentioned, but this is the main problem, I believe. So uh, clean everything up. Absolutely schmickoid, mate. It's got to be schmickoid before you can put it back together. And uh, then we can pop in that new injector, code it, send it on its way. I'm just about to blow out the injector hole, I guess you could call it, the port. 
Um, and what I've done also is just put a cover on my injector pipe there to make sure that no stuff goes inside there. We don't want to gum that up before we uh, even start the process. So cover that up, make sure it's uh, going to hold there. Then you can start blowing it out uh, inside here with some compressed air cleaner and all that sort of gear. Then you might need a rag or something to um, polish that seat up. Depends how bad the seat is. I've spent some time cleaning up that uh, seat area. Now, while it's not great and I don't have an injector seat cutting tool kit, I'm reasonably happy that uh, I've done a good job there. And the goal is to make sure that it seats correctly. So um, at this point in time, I'll put in the new injector and code it, but I've spent quite a bit of time tidying up uh, that seated area. And of course, all around it, as you can see, it's a lot cleaner than the black gunk that's uh, surrounding it. So um, yep, injector goes in next. I've got the new injector in, complete with new bolt there. Now it's really important that we do the correct torque. I'll show you how I found the torque settings. I'll put this site in the link below, but it gives a full rundown of how to do the uh, injectors, replace the injectors. So if we scroll up here, pretty pictures. It's probably out of a, a genuine book, I'd say. But the uh, settings, the torque settings are highlighted here. So you can see it's quite a quite an involved process. We do 10 Newton meters, then we back it off 180 degrees, then we do 11 Newton meters, then 162 degrees. Now, it feels super tight and it feels like it wants to break, but that's what a torque to yield bolt does. Okay, so 162 degrees is almost 180 degrees, but not quite. So um, I'll put that uh, website in the link there for you so you guys can have a look at it too. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but uh, you can have a look here and that's the actual code of the injector. This is on number four, the previous one. Um, I've got CI1T797, I think it says. And I took a photo of that before, remember? Uh, just show you on my phone, and that should correspond to that guy right there. So that fellow there, CI1T797. So that should be correct. So when we uh, change it, we should get the new code on there. According to the picture that I took on the new one, I think the number should be 788V6, what's that, S5, I'm thinking. Um, so yeah, it should do that, I'm hoping. So upon in replacement of injectors, uh, the control module requires new configuration values for the injector to perform correctly. Read the injector correction factor of the injector body. Program, programming will be required by injector identifications. Okay. Turn the ignition on, the ignition is on. And so now we need to change this guy here. Can you see that? So we need to change that into 788788V6S5. Okay, and that should be okay. Turn the ignition off and we okay that operation was successful. So in theory, everything going right, I should be able to start it, it should run correctly, and we should have no uh, bypass leakage, etc. past the injector seal. Let's see how that goes. We should also be able to do a post um, test uh, analysis. So that's the beast running now, sounds a little bit better. Uh, there's no leakage from the uh, injector pipe over there. Uh, around there, somewhere there, okay, and there's no, there's no chuffing noise out there like it was before, so that seems pretty good. I've just cleared the codes and nothing has come up. Let's do another fault scan. Fingers crossed it's all okay. Okay, so we're at a gateway module, not concerned about that. Our powertrain has passed, no faults whatsoever. Excellent, good news. So I can pass it on, I'll do a full uh, report for the customer, hand that on to him, and hopefully he's a happy man. Just taking it for a decent road test, so now we'll have a look and see if there's, we'll erase that one, and then we'll see, we'll do a full system scan once again and see if there's any issues. And we've just got that uh, relay box intermittent fault coming up again. Our PCM has no issues. So that's a great sign, isn't it? So that's it for this repair on the Land Rover Discovery Sport 2019 model with a two litre diesel engine in it. I've got an injector seat cutting tool coming, but unfortunately I didn't have it here at the time. I would have liked to cut that seat. Um, 
I'm sure that those other injectors will play up sooner or later. He's done number one, I've done number four. Two and three can't be too far behind, surely. Those seals are bound to leak. So I hope you got something from this video today, guys. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give it a like. Feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about the notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. You can catch up with us on Facebook as well as Instagram to see what's happening in the workshop as well as the electronics lab. In the meantime, why don't you surf through the channel and see what else might tickle your fancy. There might be a video that interests you. So until next time we catch up on another video together, this is Miracle Max signing off. I'll catch you later.